Well, good evening, everybody. It's so nice to see you. I would like to have a conversation with all of you about no resiliency. N-O, like when someone t tells you no, how you can respond with resilience. But here I'm on this lovely McMillan Mesa. I still have dents on my head from <laughs> my sun hat. And um, for those of you who have been commenting on my lipstick, here's a different color for you. What do you think? You can comment and let me know what you think. If Is this better or the lighter one? So I was having a chance to work with a group coaching intensive just a few days ago. And it's this incredible group of folks where we have really important um, deep discussions and talk about strategy. And, and we were, our topic for the session was influence and negotiation. And what I told them is that the last part of what we were doing that day was going to be talking about no resilience and we didn't get to it. So this is especially for them um, so that they didn't, so they didn't miss out. So I want you to think for a moment, everybody to think, who tells you no? When do you get told no? For those of you who have toddlers and teenagers, probably a lot, but when I think about who says no the most for my clients. It's often bosses and their kids. And then I can relate in that I've got a 16 year old and I feel like, oh yeah, I can relate there, similar to the toddlers. So when somebody tells us no, what I have seen happen a lot with my clients is they say that they then just think the conversation's done, right? Can I have a raise? No. Okay, and then even a little bit of a sorry that I asked and I won't ask again for another five years. What I want to do with all of you is consider a mindset flip. Consider an alternative way to view no. To view no as a conversation starter instead of a closer because now you've got clarity about how the other person's thinking or feeling, right? So this is where you lean in and get curious. A couple of sentence starters that I think can be really helpful are if you say, let's just use the example of can I have a raise? And the boss says, no, sorry, you can't. To say, is it okay to ask? Or would you mind me asking? This is where you're leaning in and getting deeper. And then you're essentially getting at why. Is it okay to ask why you're saying no to a raise? The more information you have, the better. The more you can dig, the better. So if they say, well, quite frankly, Julie, your performance has not been um, exemplary this year and we're only giving raises to people whose performance is exemplary, even though it might hurt, then I have somewhere to go. Then I can counter offer, I can give other creative ideas and solutions like, thank you so much for sharing that. What I'd like to do is put together a plan for uh, performance improvement. And if after three months, six months, nine months, whatever, I can demonstrate concrete metrics and improvement, it's sounding like then you might be open to giving me a raise. Or if they say, no, it's just not in the budget, we don't have the money. Then you get to get curious. Oh, okay, so for this year's budget, it doesn't work. Um, in terms of next year's budget, and then you can start talking in that way. Or when does the fiscal year roll over? Or whatever, those kinds of things. Or if they even get a, uh, no, we don't do that kind of thing. We don't do races, right? You're on a particular schedule and, and track. Then you get to start thinking creatively, where do they flex? Where do they have flexibility? Is it possible to adapt in terms of um, time off or flex time or any of those kinds of things? So I want you to think of no as a conversation starter. And also, even if you go in twice and you get no twice, I want in your mind a little bubble to pop up where, it's, where you're thinking that means not yet. That does not mean no forever. And I think that is really important. I have honestly talked with people who have said, I thought it meant no forever, and then I felt too shy to ask again. So at the end of the conversation, let's say you get a double no, no and a no, and there's nowhere else to go. Then you get to say, would it be okay? Would it be okay? Or something like that. If I brought this conversation back up in another six months, 
if we don't talk about when the follow-up is going to be, it can feel very difficult to bring it up at some point later. If you ask, it's very common that someone says, sure. You put it on your calendar and you bring it back up. So there we go. A little bit about no resilience. I hope everyone's having a lovely evening and I'm going inside now. It's cold. I'm wearing gloves. Okay. Good night.